Buongiorno, come stai? Calibar here. Welcome to my channel. As you will see from the title, I am here with you today uh, for a VR to the lovely Melina Teresa, who a number of weeks back did a video called Everyday Carry, where she was going through her thought process, showing tarot decks that she thought um, could be considered as... Um, decks that would be good readers to take out and about with her that would maybe be fairly neutral or cover a number of bases um, and I've seen um, a few people do VRs to this and I thought yeah this is this is a fun one I, I want to jump in so here we are um, I am not going to be going through my thought process um, of which decks I think would be suitable for everyday carry because I have the decks I have a, those decks decided upon um, and I as in the sense that you know I have a drawer downstairs in a cabinet in my hallway and I all and I do change it up um but there's there is one deck that is always in there and you'll you'll get to that um but you know I, I already know basically what I'm saying is I already know what my everyday carry decks are if I think that I can grab and put in my bag if I think I'm going to be in a position to read for someone else or maybe if I um would like to be able to read for myself on the go um, and the first deck I'm going to show you was my my everyday carry for a number of years. And the reason for that is because it was the only deck that I had. It was my one and only deck. I bought this in around 1997. I was 16 years old. That's my first foray into learning the tarot. I didn't know anything about the different systems. I simply picked the deck that I thought was the prettiest that the shop had available. And you couldn't look at all of the cards. And, you know, YouTube didn't exist to see walkthroughs. Um, so they had, you know, these plastic pockets in a binder that had a number of cards for you to just get a little taste, a little whisper of, of what the deck artwork might be like. And this is the one I chose. It is the Osho Zen Tarot. Um, and this was, as I said, before I knew anything about Smith Waite or Marseille or Thoth or any of that, anything really too much about the Golden Dawn or um, the like. And so I just went on like aesthetics and vibes, which is, you know, fair, especially when you're like 16, right? Um, so uh, this is my original copy. And uh, for those of you that that know this deck will know that it usually has a black border and titles on the card. And I did trim it back in 2018, 2019. And I hummed and hard over it for a while, but I don't, I don't regret it. I actually like the smaller size. Incidentally, they have since released a pocket version. Um, I, I don't really read with this deck anymore. Um, but I would still like the mini version because I like small things. I like mini pocket cute things. You know, I know I'm hardly alone in, in that. Um, here, this would be the two of cu uh, cups in the, in the Smithwaite. Um, so yeah, once I learned the Smithwaite sim system, this would be the hermit. I um, was able to see the roots of the Smithway in, in, in the depiction. It's just got its own spin. I knew nothing about Osho or, his, you know, his the drama, the, the trouble surrounding his followers or, you know, the, anything to do with himself at the time. Um, but, yeah, I love this. I love this so much. Look at that. Uh, this would be the strength card, by the way, which makes sense. It's such a wonderful depiction. Flower growing up through the cracks. I know this isn't a dandelion. I think it's a daisy, but um, I always think of dandelions when I think of plants growing through cracks. Lots of plants grow through cracks. I see living in London, all sorts of hardy and resilient plants growing in places you wouldn't expect. But yeah, I just I just really love the imagery of this. Um, and yeah, this was the only deck that I had. And then maybe two or three years later, I think I was already at uni when I got my second deck. I got the Canon Reed Witches Tarot, but I never really got to grips with that one. I still have it. I've kind of fallen in love with it. It's kind of like an ugly, pretty deck. Maybe one day I'll learn to read with it properly. Um, but it has the elements switched as well, which always bugs me with the deck. I like, I like you know, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, the rainbows are the pentacles, the water are the cups, the clouds, oh, the fire is the wands, and the clouds are the swords. 
and uh, this is the Knight of Swords. Um, some of the cards do skew very negatively and actually one of the reasons I did trim the titles off was some of them I found quite problematic honestly and they had never set some of them had never sat well with me some of them were fine fairly innocuous but yeah so um, yeah this one the I remember the the keyword on this or the title of this one was isolation be the three of swords um so yeah this one was one of the the problematic ones so yeah that was the the only deck that i took out and about with me so even through when i was doing my degree this was the one that i would do readings during my lunch break for fellow students um that looks like uh, yeah i was i thought one of the cards was back to front but it wasn't um and yeah and i edged it in a number of different colors that sort of make it look i don't know it looks sort of a melange but yeah anyway that's long enough on that one my next everyday carry was a deck um that came many years later it came almost 20 years later 18 years later i should say when my spouse bought me for the christmas of 2014 bought me the delightful tarot of the magical forest um, and I think I kept this with its borders for maybe a year or two and then I promptly trimmed it. This is often referred to as the Kelly Bear deck because it is a deck that I have um, raved about over the years and I absolutely adore it. Um, you know when you just associate certain decks with certain YouTubers, tarot tubers, apparently this one is mine. Fair enough. I'm not mad at it at all. Um, and yeah, this became my everyday carry because I really wanted to knuckle down with the Smithwaite. So I picked up a copy of the Smithwaite Centennial for study and then this one for like reading. And so I took it and read with it for all and sundry. I read for family. I read for friends. I read for uh, colleagues and with um, clients. I read for strangers. <laughs> I really went ham on this for practice. I didn't. I've never. I've never charged for readings. It was just for practice. And uh, this is still one of my all-time favourite decks in the world. Ever, ever, ever. This is like my my uh, yeah one of my ride or dies. So, and it's adorable and I know it's not for everyone some people have picked up this deck thinking they would fall in love with it in the way that I have and gone like oh no 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 not at all it's too themed for them or it's too cute for them or the 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 wild eyes of the little characters freak them out too much and that's fair not not all decks are for everyone um but yeah so that is mine and I edged mine in just a, a simple just in a simple green and this is the funniest thing, right? Tarot of the Magical Forest. I've said this multiple times. No forest anywhere in any of the cards whatsoever that I've seen. And I've used this deck a whole bazillion number of times. And the, there's, except for the trees on the back. Make it make sense. I don't know. Like, please, I wish the um, Low Scarabeo would like reprint this with the, their new style with the like number and the title at the bottom without all the multiple languages. If that is the case, that they have done that and I just haven't realised, someone please let me know because I haven't been able to find any information regarding that. Okay, so that was my everyday carry for a, a while. Um, and then here comes that deck that I mentioned. Did I mention it about a dex, the decks that I keep in the wooden cabinet down in my hallway to grab as and when? Um, Morgan Greer in a tin. Oh my God, who else loves these like US game tarots in a tin? I love this deck so much. I did a review of this back in 2018, just gushing how much I just love it. I can't remember if it was a review or an unboxing. I think it was a review. Obsessed, obsessed. This has, ever since I got it, been you can even see i've got some little spreads like little red tarot the 20th friday the 20th of the second 2015 there's a little red tarot selection of spreads i used to give this to people i'd be like pick pick a spread i keep it in there for old time's sake because like lol it's cute um and yeah i edged it in a blue that i found sort of matched quite closely with the backs i would love I would love a larger copy of this, especially a vintage one, but I have never got around to purchasing one. But this is, to me, it's the perfect size. I love the saturation of the colour. I love the artwork. I love the pawn stashes. 
I love the uh, I love that it's Smith weight. I love how readable it is. I love the cardstock. I love that it comes in a tin. Like how many times can I say love? Obsessed, obsessed, and it is just one of those decks that I have. It has ever since I got it has been one of my, if not the go-to everyday carry for me it is always downstairs in the cabinet for me to grab oh that's the wrong way around and every now and then i'll get an itch and i'm like i want to read with it and i'll just go down and i'll get it if i remember because out of sight out of mind with me but because it's um in a drawer that i go into quite often i do often see it and i go oh yeah and i might like grab it and take it upstairs to here to my bedroom and like read with it but oh my god i love this deck so much i think it's one of my ride or dies along with my my um tower of the magical forest and uh yeah it's it's an oldie but a goodie i just i can't i can't fault it you'll also know notice that every single one of these decks i'm showing you are either small because i have trimmed them like the osho sen which was zen which was already not a huge deck um or, you know, like the Tower of the Magical Forest, they are smaller because I've trimmed them and they're a nice size for my wee paws. Or they are naturally small, <laughs> like this tinned version, which is meant to be a travel size. So, um, yeah. And then, you know, I'm like, yeah, I really am into these um, smaller decks, but I really want a small Marseille deck because I really got into Marseille around... August September of, of 2018 and it's been an obsession ever since um, and one of the decks I picked and I haven't had this one for that long when did this come out it came out in 2018 I think I got it maybe in 2020 or 2021 there's still little bits of grass oh my god that's hilarious from the last place time I went to a park and did readings in the uh, in the park that's so funny I didn't even realize that's from last summer and uh i don't i don't is obviously not been used as much actually tell a lie i remember when this last came out it was last september because we had a mini heat wave in the first couple of weeks of september and i took this to um the the park to um i was going to say p-a-r-k because dr nomi is on the bed behind me and whenever she hears that word she gets excited but i've already said it a number of times and she's asleep so i think it's fine but yeah and i remember now because i took this this and this one in case my mum wanted a reading because it was her birthday she was having like a garden garden park party thing with the dogs all everyone brought their dogs and anyway so yeah so this is the uh, tarot de maria celia by lynn narciso and this became my sort of go-to marseille deck for a while um it's the deck that i go to if i want like a traditional feeling marseille the one thing that really i love the artwork i love the colors i love the size the blah 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 same as before the tin the cardstock is great i haven't edged this one yet because i just haven't got around to it i've got so many decks these days i like just don't get around to edging all of them um but um all of the characters are like really oh i said all of them are blonde but i've just noticed for the first time ever that this guy has blue hair and a brown beard making me look like an absolute liar i have never noticed that before blonde 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 all blonde like hang on where's my blonde blonde like what why blonde can't see her hair blonde blonde all blimping blonde 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 i'm just like but why though but why why and you know some of the old like original decks and i mean going back you know centuries they um the skin tone is the color of the cardstock some of them some of them are colored in some of them are the, just the color of the cardstock so they just like like look like pasty white like the card but often they will sort of change up the hair colour, if I can remember correctly for a lot of the decks, because the different courts could be related to um, different um, people it, physically in appearance, which is not a way that I read. I know there are some people that do still read that way, um, which is, you know, fine, whatever um, people read in different ways. Um, but yeah, that's the only, that is the first time, isn't that funny? That's the first time I've ever noticed. I'm observant. The Emperor, L'Empereur. Um, 
but yeah and so sometimes it annoys me i know some people have um taken to coloring in some of the characters hair to sort of give it a bit more diversity and again it's a very pale pale deck oh he's got a brown beard so is he bleaching his hair is that what he's doing i don't know do the cut does the was it do the drapes match the carpet or whatever people people used to oh there's someone with brown hair too but they're like dead does that count they've got like auburn hair um but you know what i mean the majority of them are blonde and everyone seems pretty much pale and it sort of irritates me because that's the kind of thing i like to um have in my deck is a bit of diversity so um yeah that that one is just like you know you're gonna read for if i'm reading for like my mum my nan, my aunt, people that are a bit more like, I just have a classic Smithwaite and a cl classic-ish Marseille and like that does me. But, you know, there's another, there's another tarot that I have in a tin, which I haven't done hard about showing because I don't really take it out and about with me. And it's the Aquarian in the tin and I'm just showing it because it's a wee deck that I have. And actually the decks that I'm showing you are not every single small deck that i have or pocket deck or sort of travel size deck that i own these are the ones that i tend to choose take to take out with me but i'm showing this one because i i feel like i want to put this into play i, I i've never really been able to get on with the aquarian tarot i think because i just fell so hard for the morgan greer that this one just felt a little like wishy-washy again the skin tones are the colour of the cardstock, pretty much. They're all like pale, and at least the hair colour is different, and there's something. It has a fairly close up vibe again. You know, this and the Morgan Grey are often mentioned together. They're of a similar era. Um, I think this one, this one was earlier. Let's see, 1970, and I think the the uh, the Morgan Grey was 1978 or 1979. I can't remember, but um. Wow, that's interesting. Looking through my phone now and looking at it in real life, it's coming up really orange on screen, but in real life it's a much deeper sort of scarlet colour. This guy, I hate this guy's face so much. It just freaks me out. Like, what is going on? It looks like his face is drawn in pencil and the rest of him... I don't know. Like, his face is so different to a lot of the other ones. It looks like they forgot to do the line work on him. And he's just drawn in pencil and they've, and you can see the shading, but they've not done the finishing touches. And also his face is just, I don't know, it gives me the creeps. So, um, <laughs> but there's some beautiful deco elements to this, this card, uh, this deck rather. And a few like little, are there any little slight sort of, nouveau nods this these flower these rods feel quite nouveau-esque but then you've got like this deco almost like claris cliff pottery style black and orange and yellow cups i don't know but i'm 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 gonna give it a go so that's why i'm putting that in here i'm gonna try and grab this one and see how i feel about it i mean this i love the sun card in this look at this that's an exercise in modern, early 20th century modern stylings there. Gorgeous. Um, but here again, more sort of nouveau-esque. So I'm like, Gee, yeah, let's give it a go, see how I feel. And if it, if I'm not feeling it, then I can always pass it on or what have you. Um, this makes me think more of the new Palladini. This has a more new Palladini vibes, which I don't own. Um, but I'm seeing I've seen quite a lot of people mentioning it lately and wondering if it's had a re-release or something. So yes, that's that one. Oh, I think it has had a re-release with a book, like a kit, a set. Correct me if I'm wrong, as I like to say, I often am. <laughs> I'm open to be ed being edumacated. Um and then we we get into the, the funner stuff. So, you know, I've got my my like whatevs sort of just basic Marseille. But if I wanna like zhuzh it up a bit squid cake i know this is not everyone's cup of tea i really enjoyed the guidebook for this one and i i've seen some people like really not enjoy the guide but that's fair like again 
everyone has different um, tastes and views and opinions. I just thought it was really handy as a jumping off point for beginners because I know how overwhelming it can be to start off reading Marseille. And I actually think that this puts things very succinctly. Um, I did say, I've mentioned it in a video before, that someone said that I saw someone comment on a video once somewhere about this deck that they felt that it skewed quite negative or was it quite negative or too I can't remember overly positive it was one or the other but I hadn't found that like when I read the the descriptions the you know the information about each card especially when we get to like the meaning and then like the visual interpretation of the structure and the outlay of the items in the pip cards, I can very much see where Jess Roller has sort of drawn from Yoav Bendov's work and a couple of others, um, like uh, Camellia Elias and what have you. And so I thought, well, instead of reading Yoav Bendov and Camellia Elias and Enrique Enriquez and what have you, start off with something very simple and small and see if you like it and, of course, take it from there. And that's mainly where I'm coming from when I when I I mention how much I I like this because I think it's a great beginner deck. This is the indie version. I do have the uh, it's the mass market version. Excuse me. I do have the indie version, which is a little less um, chunky and the card stocks like a, a, a linen. And in mine, mine is edged in a powder blue. My my indie version was very gift, kindly gifted to me um, from uh, Rosemary at Good Journeys Tarot a few years ago. Very kind of her. But I bought the in uh, the, the mass market version because I I never used to take my my indie version anywhere because it's the indie version and it was a gift and it was a deck that I had sort of coveted for quite a while since well since it I saw it being created I watched uh, followed Jess Roller creating it so. Um, when I got the mass market version of this, when was it? Last year? Was it last year? I'm pretty sure it was last year. This very quickly came into play as a Marseille for me to read with. Sorry, I'm like just chatting away, waffling on and not showing you any damn cards. You're probably watching this video going, fucking show us some cards, Kelly. What are you doing? Wow, the coloration on my video, like my camera or my phone is like weird um but i mean like hello yes look at this so cute love it um i love the little characters um i love this color palette i love the size like i said i love the little guidebook i mean now your swords on a chicken yes please um and it seems to be like these little otherworldly characters knight of batons on a snail <laughs> although i would have probably seen the knight of pentacles knight of coins on the snail because you know he's this tends to be the slowest the slowest knight i feel like i'm gonna cough because i've been speaking for so long i'm gonna pause and go get myself some water so i'll be back in just a second oh my goodness okay so that's better this is why i should always i usually always have a drink by me a cup of tea or a glass of water to wet me whistle because I I can talk the hind legs off a donkey and uh, I inevitably get a dry tickly froggy throat right though one could say I should have drunk the water before pressing resume resume okay so that one has become in the last year when did I get it March last year I'm pretty sure it was last year what even is time, as I say often? Because I just don't know anymore. The older I get, the, the quicker time hurtles by. Hurtle. That's a weird word. Hurtle. Hurtle. Turtle. Hurtle. Um, a, another, another mini deck that I have. A tarot in a tin, which is no longer in its tin. I used the tin to store something else. I actually, I'll show you. I took the tin. Oh, fuck. Hang on. Let me steady that so i went up to scotland last year to have a damn holiday for the first time in four years and to go visit friends we went and stayed at our friend's guest house well we stayed in the cottage that is attached to their guest house so that we ha could have our own little self-catering self-contained little bubble um and it was october 
did I already say it was October? Anyway, and so I was like, well, clearly I'm going to need to take something spooky or spoopy. And so I chose this little baby, which is the Halloween Tarot in a Tin. Um, I love the, I just, the colours, the colours. Um, and so this was the deck that I took for my daily readings whilst in Scotland. Many of you would have seen this. This is a US Games. The artist is Kipling West. Um, and it's stinking adorable. I have the full size version. It's one of those, it was one of the very few decks where I bought another copy, um, as is the, the, this one, as is this one. Um, and it was so much fun reading with this, you know, and this is a deck that I use all year round, <laughs> but it gets particular play during October. It's so cute. And the tin I actually use, I took the tin to Scotland as well, but not with the deck in it. I keep some slow sewing things in it. So here we have some little appliques, some embroidery threads, some needles and pins, some little sort of other little accoutrement, buttons, sequins, that kind of thing, uh, yarn for couching, um, because I like to do um, a little bit of slow stitching. And I took this, I'm, I, this is, I'm slowly working on this. Sometimes I work on this during my D&D &D sessions here at my desk as well to help me focus. Um, and yeah, I just sort of, so that was my little, it was the perfect size to store all of my little like sewing supplies in. Um, so yeah. And, and the reason I don't store this in the tin is because as you can see, I've trimmed it. It had white borders and it just I mean, you can still see a little bit of the white borders on the back, but it just bugged me so much because it's a spooky deck. Give it a black border. And I saw that like Tom Benjamin and possibly Anna at Astral Lady Tarot had like coloured in the edges of their, the borders in black, which is like a lot of work, right, for 78 cards. Um, but I was just like, no, I'm just trimming it. I, my my full size version I've just left as is and I and I edged it in orange naranja i don't know is orange the fruit in spanish is naranja is the color naranja also i cannot remember my memory is trish so yeah that is my little that's my little uh that was one that came on holiday with me and on that very same holiday i thought well i need an oracle deck I took this one. It's the Animal Spirit Oracle, the World Unknown Anim Animal Spirit Oracle, and it's the only time I've really travelled with a um, an oracle. And because it's small, because oracle decks tend to be like fucking massive, right? Like a lot of them are like big boys, and you don't be like taking that out about you. But this was the perfect. This was like the perfect size, and it, I made my own little like altar set up in a box that I put in my, my suitcase, my little suitcase, wheelie case, and I set it all up in the little, um, the little cottage that we were staying in. And it would just, it was all just fit. These fit really nicely in the box that I was using. And so, yeah, this is the Kim Cran's Wild Unknown Animals Pocket Animal Spirit. I don't have the full size. And in fact, I don't know if I ever will, because this is just the poific, I love this little water, the poific size. I love the cardstock. I like that it's like this weird chunky tin. It's like long and thin and chunky. Mm, I kind of mm, yum like it. Um, and yeah, it actually read quite nicely with the Halloween tarot because the oranges and yellows and the, the bright sort of primary colours picked out the like bright colours in this deck but sort of toned it down with all of the like black and line work, ink work so yeah that's my kind of only like travel oracle i don't know if i would take this out to do readings for people with um this was just like a little you know this was a little personal like holiday time i want an oracle deck to take with me to situation um but this this deck i have um i although i use it for myself all year round the only time i've like used this to read for other people and taking it out and about with me is generally sort of around autumn time sort of september through november because most people don't want to be read with a themed deck a halloween themed deck in the middle of like may or june unless they are a spooky bitch like me um okay and then because i've shown you the um the wild unknown pocket animal spirit i thought i would show this one for you i pull this deck more than the full size version now i have the indie sized the indie full-sized version 
Um, but I really like the wee one. I just want all, all of her decks in mini. I know that the archetypes is coming in mini. And honestly, I might buy it because the size and sort of unwieldiness, the shape of it is... It is tricky. And I, I do think that I would benefit a bit more and grab it a bit more if I, I had the pocket version. So I'm keeping an eye on I think that comes out in April. I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, this deck is, you know, I mean... It, I think it was one of the decks that really helped kick off the, the tarot craze again back in 2012. I think I got my copy in 2014, 2015, um, my original full-size copy. And I, you know, it's become like a, a modern classic. It's it's truly up there. And I know, again, as with any deck, some people hate it, some people love it, some people are ambivalent towards it. But generally, I think we this deck deserves its due for um helping to reignite that um that tarot fever tarot fever one of my other favorite go-to um uh everyday carries next world tarot by christy c row this is the pocket version again i have the full-sized indie version it was very kindly gifted to me i'm so spoiled simon at the hermit's cave gifted it to me because he's a sweeter pair um he's like only like original indie copy bless him um and this, I mean, this is the deck that I read, take with me when I am reading for my, um, like for my, my mates mostly. So this, this got a lot of play last summer. I would go to my local PARK and I'd meet up with some of my, my friends and, you know, a lot of us are queer and like, you know, a lot of my friends are like trans or non-binary, uh, genderqueer neurodivergent folks um who are really sort of into activism and um you know various social justice movements and so this deck is a great one to read for this is one of the decks where i really oh what's going on there sort of a little bit upside down where i really did see myself in as well which people will argue some people will argue they don't need to see themselves in a deck i think it's quite nice to be able to see yourselves in the deck um but you know if you don't need to, that's fine. But just know that some people would like to see themselves in a deck. Um, yeah, I, I absolutely love this deck so much. And again, this is one of the ones I where I grab the small version a lot of the time because the full size version is so shiny. The indie version, I keep saying I'll get a mass market full size version so that I'm not sort of... Um, blinded by the glare off of the, the shiny cardstock um but yeah i i just ugh, i just love this deck so much i just love christy c Rhodes artwork anyway i had been following her artwork for a number of years before she released this deck as an indie and um i'm just so grateful to have 78 pieces of her artwork this is one of the cards where i really saw myself as a spoonie i really saw myself in this one the lover's card what a beautiful depiction of the lover's card um so yeah i i love it and it's it's one of my everyday carries um we're getting down to the wire now so i'm going to show you a couple more um i've got my new marseille which is my marseille point de vie by christy aka auntie k um this is the the very mini version which i backed oh my god and look the happy squirrel is on the top oh my god um and i oh my god i love it i love it so much so many of the characters in here just i want to like hang out with them <laughs> they seem i'm like like someone here masking delivering wearing a, a mask yes thank you i like the like um i like that it is diverse and inclusive you know it features people of the global majority it features various like skin tones body sizes ages bodily abilities you know that's really my jam you know and i really like the sort of the plant choices that Krista made I think it's really interesting I like the juxtaposition between the the artwork the digital artwork and then like the foot foot can I speak a uh, photographic background so here you can see what looks to be either a sunset or a sunrise and the colors are just look at that it's set against the artwork I just really I just really love it <laughs> um so yeah like see here we have someone with vitiligo um 
And the the Queen of Wands is like my favourite, I think, in this whole deck. I don't know if they're going to pop up, but yeah, they're like, they're my favourite in here. There's so many cool characters and just so many cool depictions. It makes me so happy. Oh, there they are. I love them. I don't know. I just like, I feel like oh, they have it till I go as well, I believe. Um, but also like, I just really want to hang out and have a chat with them. Hello. Yes. Um, so yeah, this is like, I only got this last autumn, but I'm going to be putting this straight downstairs once I finish filming this video, because it is going to become like my, you know, I think this is going to be my go-to Marseille, because it's so small as well, right? I can just easily, I mean, I'm not going to be able to, if I want to read Marseille with some folks that might want to also be able to see the cards it might be a bit too small for some folks so i might have to use one of the other two sort of travel sizes that i have um but you know i i just think it's like i could literally throw this in my bum bag and it is gonna fit my my little my little bum bag that i wear a lot in the summer when i'm out and about it just i could just it's and it's so cute i just want to eat it but i won't but you know what i mean um and then the final tarot and i'm not going to go into linoir because um i would be here all day and Lenormand generally because they are small in size for the most part and there are fewer cards they're quite easy to just chuck in you can just chuck in a playing card i have set aside this is my original um prototype brown which lenny which i'm just like obsessed with right on honestly i've been doing daily readings with it um with my my new lovely linen cardstock final version and so this is now going to be my travel version so this is going to go down in the cupboard as well so if i fancy a bit of linen more this is going to be coming with me yes yes um but the 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 most recent the most recent um addition to my my tarot travel everyday carry type decks is this guy oh my god hello yes look it's the tiny traveler of the the sasarabito tiny traveler oh uh, like kim more she sent this to me um uh kim uh, you know who you are um saw in one of my videos that i was like oh don't take my sasarai beto my original indie version out well this is indie as well she um saw that i said that i i would love the pocket version and i would take that out and about with me because it's smaller and i you know i've become very precious with my original sasarai beto so kim very kindly sent me this and some other goodies uh, last week the week before i believe and oh my god the cardstock is very strange um not in a bad way just like i've never seen cardstock in a deck like it before it's linen it's like got a texture to it but not um a texture i've ever seen on a deck before um i've etched it in black and it looks great um and yeah i'm just it's the, the cardstock is like flexible enough to um riffle shuffle and yeah it's just it's the sasarai beto but make it small and i'm just like i can't wait i feel like this one um for like smith weight based decks to read with for folks like for my friends and what have you um it'll be this and this and then for my marseille for the most part it's probably going to be my pondre v and, pro and probably my, my squid cake um they're going to be my like main everyday carries like and then if i want a classic this bad boy but yeah like what a what a cutie pie hello cute who else is obsessed with small decks there are so many tarots in a tin that i want and i don't know if it's because i genuinely like the deck or just because they're small oh god this is like my favorite emperor card or one of my favorite emperor cards ever i always say this is don draper that's my head cannon. um and I love that some of the cards are quite pippish. I love that we have body diversity. I love that we have this sort of, this this artwork, this Stacia Barrington's artwork is just scrumptious. Um, yeah, warning for boobs, I guess. Um, oh, I just love it. I love the Sasurai Beto. Oh, look at this nine of pants. Anyway, so we're 40 minutes in. I was hoping I'd get this done in a half an hour. But it me, as I say, I like to waffle. Um, yeah, those are my my everyday carry. But if like, like I said, if I need to narrow it down, if I had to like really narrow it down to just the tarots, I would say uh for Marseille's, it's gonna be these guys, and then for the uh Smithwaites, it'll be these guys. 
and I don't mean I'm taking these out all the time. I will usually take a Marseille and a Smithwaite based, right? But sometimes I'm, I know what mood I'm in to read, what style I want to read in, and I'll just take one. So uh, quite often last summer I would just I would just take this, for example, uh, because I knew, or I would just take this because I knew. Um, but I, I do think I need to make some little pouches for these because the although they're very protective, they're quite like heavy, um, and I don't really need the the chunky the chunky books. I do have pouches that I've made templates of pouches. I've made pouches for this one with that can have it with and without the book. Um, so I really need to make one for my for my own copy. But yeah, they they're a bit they're sort of a bit chunky, aren't they? So yeah, I think taking them out and putting them into the uh, a smaller into a pouch or just make them a bit more travelable I don't know what's chunky so yes anyway just to get on with it I'm gonna I need to wrap up so thank you so much for watching what was your favorite of the of the travel decks that I shared with you today um what what are your everyday carry tarot decks or oracle decks do you have small oracle decks that you take out with you or are you so one of these people that just likes to take a, a deck of playing cards and you use that as like a tarot and or linormand just by default because you can also play games with it I mean, you can play games with tarot as well, but um, usually more with the Marseille, the pippy, pippy ones. Um, and yeah, let me know. I'm interested. I always like to hear your thoughts. I'm very behind on replying to comments, actually, because I've just been uh, so busy and I'm so tired. And I actually completely crashed after lunch today and had to lay down for an hour because I just could not function. But I woke up, I made myself a cup of tea and I'm filming this. So it's done. Whew. so yeah and now I've uh, got to get back to work so thank you so much for watching um, I hope that wherever you are you are safe and well and I will see you in the next one ciao